wonderful to be here at the EBBF and, and part of this Sensing the Future session. I want to tell you the story of the Rockefeller Food System Vision Prize, which actually started in the summer of 2019. I had just gotten the job with the Rockefeller Foundation and went to Haifa, Israel to visit uh, my daughter there. And every day I was able to walk up to this beautiful building here. It's the Shrine of the Bob and the, per and the Baha'i Gardens. And I would meditate and contemplate and bring a little black notebook to think about strategies that would uh, potentially be of service to humanity. And one of the things that I um, recognized or, or thought a lot about was the fact that almost all visions of the future, all the books and movies that we have about the future are dystopian. What we have is really a lot of Hunger Games and Mad Max, and we are very good at describing that world. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars, lots of talent and resources to do that. But we're actually quite bad at describing the world we actually want. And there's some reason for that. You know, we are surrounded by a lot of problems. The food system, for example, is the number one uh, emitter of greenhouse gases. About a third of greenhouse gases come from, from food systems. Uh, diet is now the number one risk for early mortality. So what we're eating is actually killing us. And all the trends are all in the wrong direction. So there is reason for being uh, pessimistic, but the reality is, you know, as I think the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I think we are in a culture right now that it's a, that's at risk of perishing because we can't envision a better future. And if you can't envision a better future, you can't create it. And with that insight, um, I came up with the idea of creating a food system vision prize. How do we envision our local food system um, in the year 2050? Um, and I thought, well, oh, there must have been other people who've, who've done this, but it turns out no one had ever done a prize for a vision, at least that we could come across, one that, and certainly not a prize around the vision of a local food system. And, and so that was unique. Um, and so we wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. So we, we launched it. We thought maybe we would get three or four hundred um, submissions because this is not an easy thing to do you know what exactly is a, a vision and how do you how do you evaluate it and develop it we in fact had to um, uh, hire uh, uh, open IDO and second muse to help develop a food system vision toolkit because this is all new territory bringing groups together and visioning a food system that can barely be imagined and then getting consensus around it um, and as I said, we thought maybe we would get three or 400 submissions. It went viral. There was a, over 1,300 submissions. We um, narrowed that down to about 76 in the semifinalists. And what that told us is there's a real hunger for hope, a real desire to, to, to envision and change the world we, we are currently confronted with. And, uh, and that was exciting to be part of this community and to be part of a process um, to, to create change at, at, a, at a very fundamental level. So, so one of the insights from that process was if you start focusing just on problems, you inevitably get into conflict uh, because people have very different opinions on the problems. But if you could focus initially on principle and values, um, it set up the groups for much more productive um, discussions because principles allow you to then guide the conversation around the kinds of solutions that you, you want to create. The second thing was um, there were a whole set of insights around the uh, food system future that was pretty universal across most of the groups. And so let me just go through five of them. The first is that people really wanted food to enable community. There's a real feeling of a loss of community, that we've turned everything into transactions and we've lost the relational dimensions of, of food. And food is inherently relational. You know, everybody uh, uh, has a connection to food. One of the best ways to create uh, harmony is to get people around a table, around a, a delicious meal. We all have a favorite food that our mother used to make for us. I mean, there are ways of connecting uh, that are incredibly important. 
and and there's also a spiritual dimension to food that allows you to to see it as part of the interconnected whole and and people feel we've really lost that so that's one insight number one the second is people really wanted uh, the food to be the basis of a new kind of economy an economy that was really sustainable and equitable um, and this is a challenge because you know we are in a world that is getting increasingly inequitable uh, we have AI and technology that is actually driving that trend. And, and so the question is, you know, how do you, for example, how do you use AI and, and automation to actually create a, a more equitable community and a more equitable economy? And, and people were not anti-technology. They just didn't want technology to be opposed, imposed upon them. They wanted technology to be given to them that would enable the future that they wanted, not the future that some corporation wanted. And, and I, you know, you can really resonate with that. For example, right now, AI and automation is being used by the largest farms to further uh, enable them to dominate the marketplace. But what if we created small robots that enabled small and medium sized farmers to be competitive because they also face tremendous um, labor issues? Um, and then finally, you know, this whole idea of creating circular economies really resonated everywhere. Everybody recognizes that we're too wasteful, um, that we are not uh, uh, taking care of the earth, taking care of the environment and biodiversity in a way that we should and we need to transform that. The third is that um, food is, in, is an amazing way to reconcile and bring people together. We had, in fact had a lot of indigenous groups who are inherently system thinkers propose visions of their future. And, um, uh, and, and so, you know, not only could we use food as a way to, um, uh, to provide uh, more justice, but also, um, you know, address issues of malnutrition and undernutrition. So much of, of our food systems really working against the interests of the underprivileged against the interests of the poor. So how do we shift that so that you have greater land ownership, etc.? And then the fourth insight is everybody recognizes at the end of the day, food is medicine, right? That the fundamentally, if you know that, that our, our food system right now is bankrupting our healthcare system. It is the the the, the tsunami of healthcare costs, uh, which is the result of poor diet, is hitting every economy and and we know that food is incredibly complex that there's all these bio biomolecules that we're just starting to understand have am amazing important impact on our on our gut microbiome and our overall health and that we can actually solve a lot of diseases uh with uh with this um with food and so changing the way we we see that you know, moving away from this ultra-processed garbage that we are now feeding so many people to whole, uh, more whole foods, more um, nourishing foods is, is absolutely critical. And that's in the basis for personalized nutrition and, and more regenerative systems. And then finally, the other was this recognition that we are living, you know, with climate change and all these other shocks to the system, that if we actually create food systems that are just and nourishing and, and equitable, that they are going to actually create the resilience that we all need and want. And, and so there was a, a lot of emphasis around those dimensions. I will end here. We had some amazing finalists, and I'll quickly go through, for example, uh, this is from the Rosebud Indian Reservation in the United States, Arukonomics from, uh, from India, Eat Right was another winner from India. Uh, we had Southwest Nigeria that came up with this amazing idea around the Food Innovation Nerve Center, and China, uh, this shift towards plant-based diets uh, was emphasized. This was from the Four Treaty uh, area in Canada, and then also Kenya, uh, Stone Barn Center in the United States. So. Uh, at the end of the day, though, you have to turn those visions in reality, into reality, and uh, and that's why I'll now turn it back to you. And uh, so glad that you were. Uh, I was able to share this with you, and and look forward to hearing more. Uh,